It's time for Defending and Commending the Faith with Joe Mott, inviting the atheist, agnostic, and skeptic to examine for themselves the evidence for the Christian faith. We are all limited by what we do not know and by the things we think we know but are not true. Dr. Joe Mott earned his Ph.D. at LSU and was a distinguished math professor at Florida State University for 38 years, helping to write three math textbooks and authoring over 30 research articles in math. He is now the host of this radio program, Defending and Commending the Faith. Here is Joe Mott. Hello to everybody. Welcome to the program. There are four possible alternatives regarding God or no God and evil or no evil. I know of no one who advocates for their alternative of no God and no evil. So that leaves only three alternatives to consider. What I call the atheistic view, evil and no God, the pantheistic view, which affirms God and denies evil, and the theistic view, which affirms both God and evil. So what about the atheistic alternative? In the last two episodes of this program, I have addressed the dilapidated house of atheism. Nihilism, where nothing has any meaning or value, is the culmination of atheism. And that, I pointed out, is self-defeating. That is what I call the roof of the atheism's house. Also, I have demonstrated that the walls for atheism's house are unstable. For one thing, the atheistic view of morality is generally subjective slash relative, and that too is self-defeating. Then I turn to discuss the foundation of atheism, namely naturalism. I referred to Alvin Plantinga, who argued, if you believe that naturalism and evolution are true, then you have a defeater of all your beliefs. That is, something that undermines all your beliefs. Now, on naturalism and evolution, you have a defeater of the reliability of your cognitive faculties in any of your beliefs. Now, the paradox is that the naturalist would have a defeater for his belief in naturalism itself because belief in naturalism is a belief formed by one's own cognitive faculties. Thus, naturalism is self-defeating. It cannot be rationally affirmed. Thus, naturalism, the foundation of the house of atheism, should be rejected and its denial accepted. I showed in episode 84 that Alvin Plantinga demonstrated that atheism is irrational. That's reason enough to make the conclusion that atheism is logically inconsistent. So I will leave that discussion right here. What are the consequences of what I have shown about the house of atheism? Its roof leaks, the walls are made of flimsy material, and the foundation is broken. Thus, atheism's house is dilapidated. Why should anyone choose such a view? I turn now to the pantheistic view. Pantheism comes from two Greek words, pan and theos. Pan means all, and theos means God. Simply put, pantheism is the view that everything is God. A pantheist might explain that nature, as the totality of everything, and God are the same thing. Pantheism teaches the doctrine that the universe is identical with divinity, or that everything that exists comprises the all-encompassing immanent God. Previously, I discussed pantheism in episode 5. Perhaps you might profit by reviewing that episode. There are different religions that are pantheistic, but all such types are nevertheless actually forms of monism, not pluralism. 
Monism is the philosophy which states that all reality is ultimately one, not many. So any pantheistic religion holds a monistic worldview. But theism, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, is not monistic because theism believes the transcendent creator God is distinct from all that God created. Much of the Far Eastern world, for most of its recorded history, has been influenced by pantheistic thought. But this philosophy has now raised its ugly head in the West and appears most prominently in the New Age movement in the innocent-looking practice of yoga, meditation, channeling, and it occurs in some programs on television and in the movies. This worldview was popularized in the Star Wars films. In case you have forgotten, New Age pantheism has the Oscar-winning movie star Shirley MacLaine, who acts as a public guru of New Age thought, along with Deepak Chopra. Oprah Winfrey and former California Governor Jerry Brown are converts to New Age. Millions flock to Oprah Winfrey's public lectures and swallow her deceptions hook, line, and sinker. All the while, she is shellacking the skids into hell. Pantheism, in addition to Hinduism, Taoism, and some forms of Buddhism, is also the fundamental belief of some Western religions, such as Christian science, unity, Scientology, and Theosophy. Even some ancient Greek philosophers were pantheistic, as were later thinkers such as G. W. F. Hegel and Benedict de Spinoza. Many unknowing people repeat certain pantheistic ideas, like karma and reincarnation, without being aware of their squirrely source. What are some consequences of the belief that the world is God? All pantheism's doctrines starts with this all-is-one monistic principle and derives all other pantheistic doctrines from it. Those doctrines are determined by a rationalistic method that allows no evidence to contradict it. First, this doctrine affects the pantheist's view of God. All pantheistic religions agree that God is an it, not a person, a force, and not a father. Rather than being the most personal being and the paradigm for all personality, as is the God of the Bible, who is a loving father, freely bestowing kindness on all his creation, the pantheistic God, on the other hand, is an impersonal force which supplies none of those kindnesses to humanity. Second, this impersonal force is so completely different from anything we know that we cannot know anything about God at all. So the pantheist would say that reason can tell us nothing about understanding God. But this assertion is either a reasonable statement, meaning it is either true or false, or it is not reasonable. On the face of it, it appears to be a reasonable assertion that reason gives no information about God, except it just did. It just told us that we can't use reason. So we have to use reason to deny the use of reason. So here's the point. We have to use reason to deny the use of reason, which makes logic an inescapable reality. On the other hand, if the pantheist says the assertion is not reasonable, then we have no reason to believe it. It is simply gibberish. The very claim, God is unknowable, in an intellectual way, seems either meaningless or self-defeating. 
If that assertion is one that cannot be understood in an intellectual way, then it is a meaningless assertion. On the other hand, if the assertion God is unknowable in, a, in an intellectual way is really understandable in an intellectual way, then it is self-defeating. For in this case, the pantheist is offering an assertion about God to the effect that no such statements can be made about God. What is being affirmed is that nothing about God can be understood in an intellectual way. But the pantheist expects us to intellectually know this truth, that God cannot be understood in an intellectual way. He is making a positive predication about God in a positive way that claims that predications cannot be made about God in a positive way. This seems that the pantheistic view of God is totally incoherent. Third, in the pantheistic view, humans have to realize we too are God. But since the pantheistic God is incoherent, it follows that humanity is also incoherent. In essence, a pantheist must affirm God exists, but I am non-existent. But this is self-defeating, since one must exist in order to affirm that he does not exist. Fourth, pantheism has a new view of the world. Theists say that God created the world from nothing, ex nihilo. But pantheism teaches that God brings forth the world from himself, ex dio. And yet God is the world. Explain how that can be. God brings the world into existence from itself, so that means God existed prior to the world. Yet the world is God, so God brought itself into existence. I don't know about you, but these thoughts are causing my brain to cramp. Some pantheists, such as Hindus and Christian scientists, say that the world does not really exist at all. At all. It is illusion. In order to overcome the illusion of matter, pain, and evil, they claim we must learn to believe that all is God, including ourselves, and then the illusion will have no grip on us. Here's my response. I can believe I am a billionaire, but that doesn't make it true. You can believe that the world is an, an illusion, but that doesn't make it true. But the claim that the universe is an illusion, in other words, a fantasy, amounts to saying that all things are actually unreal. But that claim applied to itself means that the claim would also be unreal. So that means pantheism takes a position that is self-defeating. It cannot be rationally affirmed, it is logically incoherent. Not only does the view lack rational coherence, it also lacks factual correspondence. To entertain it, a person would have to reject every shred of evidence from his five senses. More than that, this view is unlivable. Thus, failed several tests of a worldview. Even the most full-blown pantheist looks both ways when crossing the street. Every human relationship should call illusionism a bald-faced lie. Fifth, pantheism has a weird view about evil. Pantheism denies evil, saying pain and suffering is an illusion. Mary Baker Eddy writes, the cardinal point in Christian science is that matter and evil, including sin, disease, death, are unreal. That is the consensus of pantheism. But if evil is only an illusion, then ultimately there is no such thing as good and evil thoughts and actions. 
Hence, there is no difference between whether we praise or curse, counsel or rape, steal or hoard, love or murder someone. If there is no final moral difference between those actions, absolute moral responsibilities do not exist. There are no rights or wrongs. Cruelty and non-cruelty are ultimately the same. Nevertheless, pantheist writings are filled with moral appeals to goodness and self-sacrifice, despite the fact there is no basis for morality. Sixth, pantheism presupposes that the universe is all that exists. Because the universe had a beginning, see an acronym, what I call SURJET, to confirm the beginning. Since the universe could not create itself, something outside the universe had to do the creating. But then we have something other than the universe existing. Thus, pantheism leads to a contradiction. When we consider pantheism as a worldview, there are numerous problems, some of which are insurmountable. If, for example, it were true that God is actually unknowable and inexpressible by language or thought, then the pantheist could not have so expressed his view to us. The fact that pantheists in writing and speaking do express their view proves that their claim about God's unknowability is self-destructive. Okay, of the four possible alternatives about God and evil, no one claims the view of no God and no evil. The atheistic view denies God but affirms evil, and the pantheistic view affirms God but denies evil. And these two views are false. That only leaves the theistic view where God and evil both exist. I suppose I should also call this the theistic slash deistic view, for deism also believes in both God and evil. I will deal with deism in the next episode. In the meantime, exercise daily, walk with God. Thank you for listening to Defending and Commending the Faith with Joe Mott, a production of Wave 94 Radio in Tallahassee, Florida. If you have any questions or comments for Joe, please forward them to Doug Apple at Wave 94 at this email address, dougapple at wave94.com. And be sure to join us every Monday evening at 6.45 p.m. on Wave 94 and subscribe through your favorite podcast app, Defending and Commending the Faith, with Joe Mott.